Now that we've introduced our notation, we're going to spend a lot of time writing down a bunch of examples to make sure we understand what different English phrases mean and how to write mathematics using this notation. So our first example is convert the given statement into symbolic logic. Symbolic logic is a sort of shorthand for write it down using symbols somehow. The first one says an equation has a solution. We talked about this in our first video. So this is saying there exists an x such that x squared is equal to 1. In general, you can either do what I did before and try to narrow down the domain if you think it's intuitively obvious in some way, or you can just leave it up to the reader to decide. You don't need to specify a domain that the variable comes from. So I could just say there exists an x, you figure out what it is. It might be a real number, it might be a natural number, it might be a, a complex number. I didn't tell you. So I'm not going to I'm going to in general for these problems unless the sentence specifies not say a domain. The next one says for every n, some number is prime. So that says for every, in English we write that as this upside down a, that's for all n in the natural numbers. And this says it's prime, you could find ways to write this down, there's a definition for prime that we could use. For now, we're going to write down a predicate that captures that idea for us. So we're going to write down a predicate off to the side, that's called prime of x, which is just a shorthand for the idea that x is prime. So, what the sentence is saying is that for every n in the natural numbers, we have that n squared plus n plus 41 is prime. And like I said, you could write down mathematically what that means. There's several different ways to define primeness for the natural numbers. So, if you take a class in number theory, you'll likely talk more about that. For our purposes, we're just going to leave it in this way. The next one says for any real number, x squared is also a real number. So let's write that down. That's for every x that is a real number, x squared is a real number, which looks a bit funny. It says for everything in a set, this other thing is also in a set. Completely valid sentence. Also, it's true. The previous one turns out to not be true. You can try to prove that on your own if you want. The next one says the square of any real number is not negative. So that says any. Any is a bit of a loaded word in math. In general, we're going to try to use any to mean for all. So this is going to be for all x in the real numbers. I chose x because I just needed some letter to write down. I chose x because it's the first letter that popped in my head. I could call it anything, though. So the square of any real number is not negative. So that's for any real number. Its square is not negative. So write that as x squared is greater than or equal to 0. The next one says some houses have plumbing. Some is an interesting word in math. A lot of people interpret some to mean more than a couple, probably. So five, six, something like that. In math, some means at least one. That's a there exists idea. So this is there exists houses that have plumbing. In order to express this, I don't have math notation for that, though, right? So I'm going to need to define some predicates. So I'm going to define a predicate that says something is a house says x is a house. And then I'm going to find one that says x has plumbing. Plumbing. x has plumbing. And what this sentence is saying is that there is something that is a house and has plumbing. So this is a house. And that thing has plumbing. So that's a different type of statement than we've seen already. It's that there is this thing that has this property. And when you, you have that, you're saying there exists something that is that type of thing and has that property. It's an and. The next one says all men are mortal. This one is a little awkward, so we're going to define our predicates again. We're going to say that M, E, N, men of X, is X is a man. Eh, that's not probably not what it wants to, just to do. In English, usually men in this sort of old-timey sense meant just a person. But it says all men, so let's translate it directly. We're going to say X is a man. Maybe we call that man of X to make it a little less uh, awkward. So we'll call that man of X. Then we'll have mortal of X. 
which is X is mortal. And this is saying every man is mortal. This this is an idea that is in lots and lots of things. We mentioned this when we first introduced predicates. All things of type A are also of type B. All things that are men are also mortal. These are written down most commonly in the following way. For all X, if it is a man, then it is mortal. So you're trying to say, for everything, if it is of the first type, being a man, then it is also of the second type. We're trying to imply that being a man implies you are mortal. The next problem says every algorithm halts. This is a known problem. It's called the halting problem. If you take a class in automata theory, you'll talk about that actual idea. For us, we're just going to try to write it in language and then move on with our lives. I'm going to show you that you don't need to always write these in really big ways. I could write something like A of X that says X is an algorithm. X is an algorithm. And H of X is X halts. Halts means stops. So this says that every algorithm stops, which is clearly false. You can write infinite loops. But just like before, every is just like all. It's that for every X, if it's an algorithm, then it halts. The next one states that every prime number greater than 2 is odd. So we're trying to say for every x, if it is a prime number and it is greater than 2, then it is odd. And odd, eh, we don't have a notation for that, so let's define it. We'll do O of x is x is odd. So we have, this implies that it is odd. Like, and like I said earlier with prime, you could probably write down mathematics to define that. In fact, we'll do that later in this unit. But for now, we're just going to write O of X and move on with our lives. The next one says there is a, an even prime number. So we're probably going to need something to talk about being even. So we're going to write down even of X. So we're just going to write down E because we're lazy. I'm going to say X is even. And then this is, there is, there is in math says there exists, something exists, just one. So this is, there exists something, an X, such that it is prime, and it is even. The last one says every set is a subset of itself. We said this exact idea when we talked about sets, so let's try and represent that here. We actually don't need too much notation here, but we don't have a way of saying something is a set, so let's try to write that down. So we'll have a predicate that says something is a set. This is going to say x is a set. And we're going to say for all x, if x is a set, then x is a subset of x. You'll notice something here that is worth mentioning, which is that for alls have implications sometimes, and there exists have ands. It is very, very rare that you will have something else. Because a, a for all having an implication is completely fine, because there will likely be things that don't satisfy the hypothesis. So for example, all men are mortal. Sorry. For example, all men are mortal. There are things that aren't men which means that the hypothesis is sometimes false. That's completely fine, though, because if, if the hypothesis is false, the entire statement is true. This revisits our idea we talked about with predicate logic, where we said that the false, imp sorry, at the start of an implication is useful to us because we want to be able to say statements like these mathematical statements. We want to be able to say things like every prime number greater than two is odd. The existence of prime numbers less than or equal to two or the existence of things that aren't prime numbers should not ruin that implication. So this helps reinforce that idea we talked about with implications, where if you have false implies anything, the whole statement is true. Similarly, you'll notice that it, there exists have ands, and again, that's not surprising, because it's just saying that something is true. If a for all had an and, that's saying every single thing in existence is this and is this. So if you have anything that you can define that doesn't satisfy both parts of the and, then it immediately becomes false. Those types of statements are incredibly rare. So implications 
commonly go with for alls and ands commonly go with there exists and the opposite is very very uncommon 